welcome back. I just bought the nastiest Toyota. What I meant to say here was the nastiest MR2 on Craigslist. And by nasty, I mean covered in mold and rash. More on that later. As some of you guys know, I'm building a 1967 Volkswagen Squareback, and I'm also working on my daily 2002 WRX. The problem is, while I'm working on the WRX, I'm always really stressed out about getting it done in one weekend, because if something goes wrong, I'm stuck without a car. So, I set a little bit of money aside and found something I could get into. I've always liked MR2s, and this is my favorite generation, the SW20. There's definitely a lot of things wrong with the car, <laughs> but it's running and driving for the time being. I already ripped out the interior. We're gonna clean that up. And I set the timing because the timing was a little bit off. Today, I'm just gonna work on getting the outside clean and cleaning the inside as well. And then we have a bunch of other things to do, but let's get started. If you guys are enjoying this video, you can like, subscribe, and drop a comment to help out the channel and see more videos like this. Back to the show. It was at this point that I realized the mold and rat problem was way worse than I initially thought. And because of that, I was gonna need to remove the dash and pull the heater core because as it turns out, rats were literally living in sh inside of the heater core. Pulling the dash really wasn't that hard. It just took a lot of patience. If you're gonna do this, I highly recommend getting some trim removal tools. They're only about $5 on eBay or Amazon and they were incredibly helpful. Today I'm doing what's hopefully the last thing I need to do before I can start putting the MR2 back together again. I need to pull out the heater core because unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately I need to pull out the heater core because for one, this car had a mold problem, two, it had a rat problem and it was way worse than I initially thought. Unfortunately, the critters had gotten into the heater core, literally into it, I pulled out the motor and there's a rat's nest inside of it. There's no way I could remove it with it still in the car. Dash and everything is out. Today we're gonna reroute the coolant so that we can safely remove the core and still have a coolant system that works. 
So I got the hoses, I have the hooks. I'm gonna show you how to reroute the coolant and then we can start putting this thing back together ASAP. Let's go. I went on the forums and also asked around on the Facebook groups and I found a lot of information on how to reroute it up front. There's also a better way to do this where you reroute it at the engine, but I had the info to do it this way and I already have the couplers and the hose. So today we're gonna reroute it up here. Later on, I'm gonna go through and do it at the engine bay. It's just gonna be cleaner that way, but for now, this is gonna be fine. So I saw some pictures on how to basically connect these two heater hoses together to create a loop so that you can remove the heater core. Someone mentioned that if instead of just looping these two points, you loop this hose and this one, you get to retain this bleed valve, which is a good idea because looking at it, I would imagine that you would create a high spot in the system that you couldn't bleed air from if you only loop these two. So today we're actually gonna connect this guy and this guy. That'll create a loop that bypasses the heater core and we can still bleed it from here. I went to the auto parts store. I got a couple of couplers and I got some hose just in case I need it. If that hose is too dry rotted, I'll replace it with this. They didn't have black. I'm not super crazy about putting a red hose up front, but I mean, that's just like an aesthetic thing. I got a couple of hooks, I got a screwdriver and I got some pliers. So hopefully without too much trouble, we can remove those hoses and loop it and finish getting the heater core out. I'm gonna grab a towel because I'm probably gonna spill a bunch of coolant in here. Right, the heater hoses are off. They weren't too hard to get off. I just use these hose hooks. If you guys don't already know, you use these to slip it underneath the hose and it kind of breaks the bond between the hose and whatever it's attached to. I did, however, have a little bit of trouble getting this clamp off. I hit it with penetrating fluid, used a screwdriver, then a ratchet, still couldn't get it off. So thankfully, my brother has this impact wrench and just zipped it right off. Anyways, these guys are off. I have the coupler in there just to kind of help tilt the hose up to keep it from spilling. I think what I should do is, even though these hoses actually don't feel dry rotted, they still feel pretty pliable. They're imprinted with the clamp marks. So I think I'm gonna slice the ends so we have fresh hose and then slip it over the coupler and clamp it back together. At that point, we'll have the physical loop actually done. We still need to bleed the system and of course finish removing the heater core from under the dash, but the actual loop will be done. And again, if you guys were wondering, later on at some point, I'll loop it at the engine bay because it's a little bit cleaner and, you know, it allows us to actually remove a bunch of piping if we want to. But for now, I have the materials and the know-how to do it this way. Well, hopefully the know-how. <laughs> just been reading forums and asking on the message boards. <laughs> Anyways, let's cut the ends of the hoses and get this done. Yeah, I just wanted to share a cool tip I learned at some point. Sometimes it's hard to cut straight through like a radiator hose, but uh, someone told me that if you use zip ties, it actually helps you line up your marks to so you keep it straight all the way through. done just so you guys know that bottom hose is molded so it's supposed to have a little bit of a curve in it I just shortened it so that I can make sure it wasn't kinked up anyways it looks good I got the clamps on next thing to do is finish pulling the heater core out of the car if any of you MR2 guys have any recommendations or resources for someone like me just getting started out with MR2s drop a comment down below I'd love to hear what you have to say back to the show I don't know if the video really does it justice, but you can see right in here, 
the critters had actually crawled inside of the heater core and made a nest in there and it's full of <laughs> all sorts of disgusting stuff. That's why unfortunately I had to remove this. I could hear and feel that the heater was clogged and when I opened this stuff up, of course, it's just full <laughs> of rat sh in nest stuff. I already unscrewed everything. It looks like there are a couple of heater hoses back there that we have to cut through. We already did the reroute, so it's okay to cut through that stuff now. And hopefully, we can wiggle this thing out of here without too much trouble. It's a really, really tight fit. Even removing everything that I did, it was still hard to get the motor unit out. As you guys might know, I already removed the motor. Let's get this out of here today. And just so you can see, here's the motor unit. I already pulled it out. That was full of rat stuff. And this is actually the dash bar. And somehow even the dash bar <laughs> is full of rat's nest stuff. They're everywhere. It's like, it's horrible. I've never dealt with a car with rat problems. And now I know, <laughs> like run, <laughs> just run from a car with rat problems. All right, we're all taped up. And if you guys can see, I have two heater hoses back here. I'm gonna slice through them and hopefully pull this unit out. So it turns out these are hard lines back here. Those guys right there, they just had some insulation over them, but those are definitely hard lines. I can't see how to disconnect them. finish getting this out of here. Looks like I need to remove these Torx bolts. It looks like an ECU. I know there's another ECU in the back of the car, but this looks like some other type of control unit. You MR2 guys, you can tell me what it is. If you know what this is, drop it in the comments. core is out. The last thing to do before we put it back together is actually just vacuum and wash out the inside. I pulled all the floor pan plugs so I can actually just run water in here. I'll do my best to avoid the electronics but I think that's the only way to really get this clean. I've already done it before but just finishing pulling out the heater core there's a bunch more rat and just disgusting stuff here so I want to get it nice and clean before we get it back together and get it on the road. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna let this thing dry out. Stay tuned because next time we're gonna put the car back together and bleed the system to finish off the heater core delete. I believe in you. Get to wrenching. Peace. I just want to let everyone know I have more Squareback and Subaru content coming soon. I hope you enjoy this MR2 video in the meantime. Peace.